and we're going to be talking about blood and Punnett squares. And the first thing we're going to talk about, a quick review here, is the alleles. There's three alleles. You have A, you have B, and you have O. The genotype, the symbol we use for them, A and B are both dominant. So therefore, we're going to use capital I for both these. And O is recessive, so we're going to use a lowercase i. Take a look at the genotypes for each of these. Okay. They're both dominant. A and B are both dominant. And because of that, we have a capital letter. But if I did this, if I did, say, you know, I had big I, big I. What is what are, what are we dealing with? Do we know? No, you have no idea. It's not possible. Because they're both capital So am I dealing with, you know, A? Am I dealing with B? You don't know. So what we do is to represent the difference between A and B alleles, we write a superscript. So now I know exactly what allele I'm dealing with when I get a capital letter. Because A and B are both dominant. So if I now, if I go A, A, there we go. Now we know I'm dealing with A blood. Now, if we take a look at A blood, A blood can be big A, big A, or it could be something else. Now, you're like, wait a minute. Well, the way you got this superscript, you're confusing me. Slow down. Not so bad. If I take a look at something that is, uh, you can be either homozygous or heterozygous, just like when we did deal, dealt with tall and short. You can either be big T, big T, or you can be big T, little T. Well, here, I got big I, big I, so I'm just changing the letter, so it's still big T, big T, or big I, big I. But now remember, because they're both down, I have to identify what, what, I'm, what, what job am I dealing with. Am I dealing with A or B? So I've got big A, big A, or I can be big T, little T. And in this case, instead of T, we have I. So go big I, little I. But once again, I just can't leave that as just an I. I have to give that dominant letter some a little more specific detail. Is it A or B? Well, we're dealing with A blood, so let's say A. On the B part, you can have what? Big T, big T, or big I, big I, right? That's me, B. So I gotta give more detail. Or I could be big T, little T, or big I, little I. Big B. All right, so if you understood the stuff we did at the beginning with the big T, little t, same stuff, we're just adding just a little bit of a tweak to it, adding the Bs. And of course, recessive, like short, you have to be two small lowercase letters. So O is simply just little i, little i. So let's talk about doing some planet squares here. Okay, let's talk about actually doing a cross between something that has here crossed with this. Now, find square. Plug in my parents. One parent here. And a parent here. We just simply do our normal Punnett square stuff. We bring our eyes down. B. I, big I, B, bring our I across, bring our little I's down now. Nothing's changed. So now if I ask for a genotype, the genotypic ratio here, I'm going to have, I remember, when you do a genotypic ratio, all you're doing is you're telling me what exactly do you see. Well, I have one, big I, A, big I, B. It's one of them. I have one big I B little I. I have one big I oops try again. Big I A little I. 
and I have one little i, little i. So it's a one to one to one to one ratio. Now on the other hand, the phenotype, this is the physical appearance. And so, well, what kind of blood is this? Well, this blood is AB. The next box over, big I A, little I is A blood. Remember, A squashes out the little I. Big I B, little I is B blood. And little I, little I is O blood. So it's a one to one to one to one ratio. Now, of course, you just can't go one to one to one to one because it's numbers have value, but they have no meaning without labels. We have 1AB, 1A, 1B, and 1O. No problem. So let's do one more here. So here we have, if I say heterozygous, A crossed with O. Heterozygous A means what? Well, I means I have big I. Oops. Heterozygous big I little I, right? Two different. And we're dealing with A, so big I we have to give it a, a letter. So it's big I A, and O is little I little I. So we just do our print square with that. Big I A little I little I little I. And so we get a one-to-one -one ratio of big I A, little i, because there's, well, two to two, but we, we reduce it down. Well, let's go ahead and say two to two. But we can simplify this down to one to one, big I A, little i to one, little i, little i. Yeah, it's not the cleanest, but we'll go with it. And the phenotype is, is once again, you've got two big A's. So 2A to 2O. Oh, I can simplify that down to a 1A to 1O. Oh. So for every one that has A blood, I have one that has O blood. Now, that's blood type. On the other hand, you can do another thing with blood. You have positive and negative. Well, positive is dominant, and negative is recessive. And we can do a Punnett square with that. So if I have something that's heterozygous dominant, that's going to be a positive negative. And I have something that has negative blood, that's going to be crossed with a negative negative. I do a Punnett square, same thing can happen. I get my parents on one side, one parent here, my other parents over here. I do my positive and negative, positive, oops, negative, this happens in rush, positive, negative, negative, negative. So my genotypic ratio is going to be one positive, negative to one negative, negative, and my phenotypic ratio is going to be well, two to two, two positive, reduce that down to one. So one positive, two, one negative. And that's the basics of Punnett squares in blood.